people can hear us now. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Well. I mean, it would probably be helpful not to hear myself. I labeled this one as visual ASMR. I don't know if that will if that will do anything. Are you still hearing it echo? Ah. Got it. <laughs> Is it the one on the browser? Like inside the stream? Yeah. I suppose I could do the things I normally do to make the image look good now. <laughs> well, they uh, supposedly did maintenance on the instrument. But um, when the guy was here, he asked me what kind of, you know, like magnification can you get reliable pictures from? And I said, I don't know, like usually like 130 is pretty good. And I said, I sometimes have managed to get like 160, but I kind of have to work on it a lot. And he's like, oh, OK. I was like, what should it be? And he said, oh, uh, our standards are like 100,000. So I was like, oh, well, I mean, I can do better than 100,000, so. <laughs> yeah, almost twice as good as that, but, you know, it requires some, some work. Hey, Micah. Really? That's interesting. interesting. I can't hear pack in the stream. <laughs> oh. Well, that's normal. Uh, let's see. Is that always going to be the case? Uh, I can edit your volume. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Am I one of them? <laughs> we could do it in your Discord if you want to edit my volume.
Uh, it's just San, just San Francisco Bay. Can you still not hear her, Micah? Why that's yeah I can hear you I wonder why this is the case it was I haven't changed the settings at all from when John was on and huh, that's weird Yeah, I can hear you. No. Okay. So, let's see. Hmm. I wonder what the problem is. Because you light up. Like you're... Like you're speaking. Let me see. <laughs> that, that would be kind of fun, but... <laughs> uh, I mean, the rest of the time I'm talking to myself, but I'm normally talking to myself, so I guess it's about the same. this in. I don't know if that changed anything other than I don't think she can. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know. No? It's in the right understand why y this doesn't work with you, but it worked with John. Hmm. But they can hear me, which is the weird part, because I'm coming through the same app as you. So... Yeah. You're a ghost. Yes. Hmm. Maybe I will... Let's see. I'm going to kick you out and bring you back in and see if that does anything. <laughs> well, first I have to figure out how to do that. I need you to be somewhere I can grab you. Okay, there you go. I don't know if that if that changed anything for people. Oh, yeah. Hi. Um anyone out there can hear Pacific Plankton yet? Hmm. 
Hmm. That's super weird. Yeah, I can hear you fine. No, don't do that. <laughs> You're in my ear. can just read stuff to me, I guess, and then I'll tell people what you said, or you can tell them what you said. <laughs> You're my voice to text, or text to voice. Yeah, it could be. Um, I mean, I don't believe in ghosts, but... Oh, I don't think it's the SEM. I don't know what this... Sh what this shape is. Is this a girdle for you? I think maybe it's just a diatom that got folded. Yeah, she's all the way up in Discord. That's the problem. Like, her volume's all the way up in Discord. Uh, I don't know. Micah, join the Discord, and then I'll s drag you in and see if you can be heard. That would be interesting. Maybe she's not real. Maybe, what is this? Maybe she's just a voice in my head. What the heck is this? <laughs> I do. Alright. Now what happens when Micah talks? Oh, I gotta unmute him, I forgot. <laughs> I know. That's what I do. I just suppress people. Huh. You're not in my head then. Hmm. I wonder what the problem is. I don't know. I That's a bad sign. Everybody's extremely quiet. Hmm. <laughs> Hi. Well. It's also there's like a, a Melisaro with a donut hole in the middle. Okay. I mean, I already have a job, but okay. 
What are these little things on here? I don't know. I need to work on this image a little bit. I feel like it needs adjustments. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do some auto magic gun heating and column centering and uh, some other things I normally do. And I'm, this is interesting. So everything in the widget for the voice widget is set up correctly. And in fact, in the voice widget, it shows mica and Pacific Plankton. And it does have you like constantly on for your microphone for some reason pack. But, um, but Micah, when you talk, I think yours just lights up only when you talk, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's weird. why this worked when we tried it one time and then now it's not working. Uh, it's the Discord stream kit. And as far as I can tell, everything is set up. What about this? Keep talking. Stream kit, because it doesn't actually show you as your voice moving when you talk. Yeah. Oh, we're zoomed very close uh, last. Um, I'm just trying to get the uh, the image we're just starting out, so I'm trying to get the image warmed up correctly. Um, so for right now, uh, it was working on the gun heating. And, um, and now that that's more or less stabilized, I normally go through this steps a little bit earlier, but I was trying to get the sound working. Um, so then it does some auto uh, gun centering, and then I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment to the... Hello? To the wobble and the stagnation, and, and then we'll be able to see things clearly. But um, for now, it's still tweaking the image a little. It's taking a lot of time to accomplish easy tasks. Ah. Can you give him a shout out? It's taking a really long time to do the gun centering. He supposedly went through and did some manual adjustments to the um, to the column as well, but uh, I wouldn't think he would make it worse. I mean, they're an engineer, so 
I kind of feel like they should know what they're doing, but... This is, like, super weird. Uh, let's see. Well, there's a lot of, um... These guys hanging out in here. This is Bacteriastrum, right? Is that what that is? Hang on. It has like a wavy looking spines. This ring? I don't see a ring associated with these spines. They just go they just go out from in the middle. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is actually. Maybe a girdle band, yeah. The surface is super smooth. Here, they have little connections. Okay, I can get a picture of it. Hang on, I still need to make some adjustments to the image though. So I'm not happy yet. Yeah, I know, isn't that weird? Well, they can read you. I think it probably is just something that landed on the slide, and then this is a separate thing. Um, okay, let me work on... I'm going to come back to this. I won't go very far from it, but I need to find something with some texture. Right. I need to find something with holes so I can... Uh, I'll come up to this guy here. And I can look at these um, stretched processes on here because I need to have something to, to yeah, fix the image a little bit. Okay, start with the wobble. Ah, you see how bad that is? Yeah, uh, what I'm doing is trying to fix the wobble of the beam. So I'm manually centering it. And I'm actually just trying to do it in a co very coarse fashion first because that image was very not uh, centered. Actually, it's still got a whole bunch of problems. Um, one of which is the beam intensity is too high. Uh, 
and now it's a little bit better. So this thing that's going on here in the middle is trying to, the image should be stable in the middle of there. So if, like where my mouse is, it shouldn't be moving around, but it is just a little. The less it moves, the better. So it's still wiggling just a little, but it's way better than it was. And then, yeah, it was, it was moving around quite a bit. And then I need to fix the stigmation as well. So that's this other aspect that needs to be adjusted so we can actually see something. Uh, it has to do with the way that the, um, like if you have a sense of what's going on, the, um, the instrument's moving up and down a little bit, just very subtly, and um, it allows us to figure out what's in focus by, uh, so if it's a little too low and the beam is wobbling, um, it will shift. And if the beam is basically dead center and it lowers and raises, what happens is it just goes out of focus. Right? So if it's just going out of focus, that means that the beam is straight, it's hitting the surface where you're expecting to hit it. And um, so when it's wobbling, what happens is the, the, um, the carousel is moving up and down just a little bit. And, um, and it's, uh, it's like the beam is coming in at an angle, basically. So it sort of stretches the image sideways. I have X and Y controls when I move it to actually make adjustments to it. And it's, the stigmation is sort of similar. It's like focusing the beam on the spot where you want it. And it's also a little bit better than it was. It's still not great. Like that image is still not great for me. Um, but at least I can see things, so. Uh, it's not that, it's like 4.9. So I'm usually at around five. It's pretty close to where it normally is. Um, but that uh, it shouldn't make a difference for like this part. So, but I can fix the wobble a little bit by zooming in, uh, getting a little bit closer and then redoing the wobble. So it's gonna, you see how it's just kind of drifting a little bit left and right still. And, um, a little bit. Uh, it's more like when you go to the doctor, the eye doctor, and um, they want you to know which is better, like this one or this one, this one or this one, and they flip through the lenses. It's kind of like that, um, except for I'm just tweaking it a little bit at a time. So, um, let's see how good that is, how much of a difference that makes when you're there. Now you can actually start to see the structure of the, um, of the actual object that I'm trying to get into perfect focus. And this is the part that usually just, it takes a little while to work with the image to get it 
exactly where you want it. And what I'm mostly doing is looking at areas where there's high contrast. And I'm trying to make sure that that contrast is as defined as it can be. So like in here, there's these little tiny holes that are U-shaped. And um, the closer it gets to being perfect, the more clear those little holes will be. And then I can slow it down and we ought to be able to see that the surface is covered with a whole bunch of little tiny um, salt and pepper shaker heads. That's what these things are right here, the Cribra. And the image is still just a little fuzzy for me, but I feel like now I'm nitpicking, right? Now, I, now I'm like, I might take like a long time to actually get that image a little bit better than that, um, but it's pretty good. So we can leave that and I can come back to this thing which is our object of interest, unknown object of interest. And maybe get a good picture of it. Now that we can actually see stuff. It probably does, uh, but I'm not totally convinced. Let's see, we slow it down. I mean, if your question is, is it actually a diatom? I don't know. Um, it doesn't look, it doesn't look super diatom to me. But, um, so this is, I think, the live material from, um, from March 1st? Yeah, from March 1st. So it's totally feasible that this could be some other kind of organism. Um, I'm not sure which kind. It doesn't look like a diatom to me though. These things, they look like little filaments to me. Um, but they don't look like diatom pieces. <laughs> it's kind of ravioli-like. If ravioli had tentacles. Okay, let's look at it here. I mean, you can see diatoms have holes, right? And they're really distinct and they have structures that you should be able to pick out. So I'm, I'm gonna guess it's not a diatom. Uh, the what is it category, I don't have an answer for, but uh, sometimes that happens. Especially in this live stuff, you know? Uh, I mean, these things look really like that's definitely not diatom looking. We're gonna zoom in and look at this in a minute in here. Cause it looks like it, they look like, you know, like um, distributor caps on a car and then it's got a long cable and then it's got this structure out here. Uh, I can see one of these things are broken right there and another one's broken right there. But they just continue stretch out um, I don't know. Could it be one of your jellyfish? Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to get a picture of it, and then I'm going to zoom in and take a picture of it a little closer. Mysteries are okay. I like mysteries. Hey, open set. How's it going? We're looking at Mysteries of the Deep with Pacific Plankton, who is talking but can't be heard by anybody but me, apparently. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Mysteries of the Shallow. <laughs> Great. Hmm. Uh, maybe... <laughs> Possibly. uses oblique lighting on the microscope. Oh, wait a second. That might have changed things for us. Maybe they can hear you now. Can you hear me now? You can hear me now? Wow! They can hear me! <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me play with the settings just a little bit. <laughs> You'll have so, to tell me what you did later, and then I can try it next time on mine, because that seems like a lovely solution. Hooray! Okay. Uh, keep talking. Okay, so I'm I'm not just a ghost in the chat anymore. There we go. Now I'm a real voice. Yes. Hooray! Andalor can hear me. Yay! Ah, yeah, good. Now it's not like I'm talking to myself anymore. <laughs> I only seem Bad. half crazy now. Better half crazy, right? Oh no, it's a diatom, right here. Those are Cite. Yeah, they've got the um, the jagged yep. kind of serration on them. Yep. So. It's uh, probably bacteria, bacteria astrum. It could be, although honestly, I've never seen Corethron this close. That's why I was asking, but if this is the live material, it might still have, um, you know, goo mm -hmm. on the outside. Oh, Andalor, do you hope to inhabit a microscope in the next life? I kid, I kid. Andalor, it would be interesting to be the voice in the microscope. Right, if we can upload our consciousness in the future to extend our, you know, if you can call it life, I could be the voice of a microscope. Um, that sounds pleasant. The question is, could you see what was happening on the microscope as the voice and help people make it better? Well, I hope so. That would be fun. I mean, what are these? These, I get. What are these things? Super weird. So cool. They look like they're holding on to something. Like little crab claws? Mm -hmm. Or grappling hooks? Oh, could you take a picture of that? Just like this? Um. I was going to zoom out a little so you could see. Maybe just a little so you can get some of the central part, but not too much because those little hooks make it look <laughs> deliciously evil. <laughs> All right. There's some discussion about a Black Mirror episode. Sounds like a nerdy manga plot. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of pic... Okay, let's see. Um, a lot of projects for that, but I was actually instead hoping to sync them to L a LFO from the modular setup for a little something different. That was from OpenSet. Oh, the, um, the lighting you were working on for your microscope. Mm. Anakim says there are more diatoms, planktons in the world, so I think most likely they're not going to be a microscope. Uh, what about a mobile microscope? <laughs> That'd be cool. 
maybe polarize only the light from the LEDs. Oh, I see some interesting effects. So there's cross conversation, sorry. It's all right. That's just crazy. Well, crazy view is what we get all the time around here, so. I've decided that uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to have to uh, live with my visual ASMR tag. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. Embrace it. Yes, exactly. I will still mm -hmm. resist the audio ASMR though. Yeah, I wish I understood what was going on here, but, you know, marine stuff is weird. Yes. Oh, hello, Andrew Vaughn. Uh, I'm a diatom researcher, and um, I analyze diatoms for my work, but the stuff that we're doing right now is mostly for fun. Um, although I am kind of uh, training myself marine diatoms, um, I mostly work in freshwater. So um, these are some samples that Pacific Plankton, who's here as my guest today, uh, as a disembodied voice, is <laughs> um, responsible for collecting and sending to me and then um, I placed them in the scanning electron microscope here in my lab. And we've been looking at um, some of the samples. She, she's been sending me stuff since, I think, October or something of last year, every once in a while. Um, so broadly, I'm right now doing sort of just science outreach. And, uh, and I don't know, this is sort of like fun for us. Uh, but a lot of times... Um, things that we see here are somewhat related to th things we also see in my samples. So uh, either the structures or the, um, the organisms, as many of the genera do sort of overlap, um, but not all of them, so. And also the, um, some of the images that you share with me, I get to use in education and outreach here. Right. Doing general um, uh, plankton education with school groups, and, um, and yeah. others. <laughs> right. So it's a nice sort of partnership that we have. And Pacific Plankton is also a streamer on Twitch. And she streams from her light microscope looking at these same materials. So if you go back in time to uh, March 1st. No, yeah, I think March 1st was the day you collected these. Um, you could look at her stream and you could actually see these organisms where they were collected live, um, the living parts wiggling around and, or crawling around or whatever they do, and um, living cells in the diatoms. So that's sort of a nice, I think that's a nice combination to be able to get the living, a sense of the living sort of plankton. And then uh, we can't usually get that close with the living stuff. so. Um, she sends them to me afterwards in some cases, and then uh, once they're dead, we can slap them on the SEM. Dead things. Yeah. Anakin, Micah is not Mallory. Mallory is Igor, and Igor is not here. Yeah. Oh, is Micah still on the channel? No. Um, Micah's in chat. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure. I hadn't heard from him for a while, so I wasn't sure if there was a... It didn't tell me he left, I guess, is what I'm saying. So... Ooh, what was that? What was that little guy I saw? It was just there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's just the Odentella. Mm -hmm. the, the little kind. Oh... They are cute. They look like little... Oh, there's another one right here. They look like little... Um, 
with the little thing that gets picked up by the claw in the Toy Story. There's like little aliens with the uh, three eyes. If you just put the three eyes on it, right? They had little they ears like and antenna. That. They look just like this. Yep. They do. They're probably looking up right now at the SEM going, The claw! <laughs> the claw. <laughs> the gun! Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of those little guys in here. Yeah. I'm always, uh, there's so many big things that I always, like, overlook the little things. Whenever we look through the SCM, I'm always just like, oh, look at this huge thing that's taking up, you know, massive amount of space. And then when you actually get to the, the little stuff that's sort of hiding in the background, it's also kind of cool, so... Andrew Vaughn wants to know, are they all coated with metal or is that not necessary? Uh, everything in this sample has been coated with gold. Yeah, uh, it's necessary for, for diatoms. Um, but this also, this sample is from the living material. So it was alive. We didn't digest this sample. Um, I do have other samples on this stub that were digested, but I think this one is the living component. And... Um, uh, so that requires me to coat them in gold or, or some metal um, or they wouldn't be, um, they would get charged up. Yeah, so diatoms don't, uh, they, uh, because they're made out of silica, they don't conduct electricity very well. I suppose that's a good thing. Um, I mean, not for the SEM, it's not. <laughs> and for the diatoms. <laughs> well, I mean... Oh. Silica is what the like microchips are nested in, right? So, as an example, because it's not conductive. Uh, Anakin's worried we're never going to see that jellyfish thing again. Well, it's on the stub, so I could go see it whenever I'd like. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the nice you parts. See it. That's right. Uh, I did take pictures, though, so you could see the pictures whenever you'd like as well. We might never see anything similar to it again, um, but somehow I doubt that. I feel like lots of weird things. I'll continue to get samples from Pacific, probably, and then, you know, we'll see things again. We might find something else that's really cool if we keep looking. Which one? Which one what? What was that? I don't know what you mean, what was that? Are you talking to me? There was a, um, I think it was a catastrophe. It was just funny the way it was curled. It was like a little TIE fighter. Oh, okay, yeah. There, there are catastrophes all over this slide. Oh, yeah. There's a Asteromphalus, I think. Yeah. Annika was worried you were going to throw the samples away. Once you make the stubs, what happened to the stubs? Um, there are like uh, racks of stuff behind me that are filled with our old stubs. So actually everything that um, we've used on the SEM, we have uh, here in our archives, even ones that didn't turn out very well. And at some point I really need to focus on getting it organized. Um, I keep thinking that uh, I'll have Mallory do that one of these days, but one, she's very busy. And two, some of the stuff, we don't have any place to put it because I need to make some more like I use a drill bit and drill out some wood blocks and make sort of big um, storage things that we can store the stubs in. And I still need to do some more of that. So um, it's mostly my fault. But uh, it's a disaster back there. I need to go through and like, like really organize it. So before it gets, uh, before it gets much worse, <laughs> it's already, 
at the point where uh, for some of them the labels kind of came off like you can't see it because of the um, the gold coating so for those I'll probably need to stick them back in the SEM to figure out what they are uh, which will be interesting because uh, we play this game sometimes right where I just stick a sample in and then uh, and try to figure out what it was Okay, let's look around and see if I can find one that's a clean sample. Uh, and then Andrevon wants to know how much of your primary research is based on the SEM and what other methods fill the rest? It's a good question. So I would say um, I was able to, to do my research without an SEM for um, two decades. So uh, until I actually got an SEM, or not, well, not quite two decades, but close. I think this is just a big piece of poop. Oh, I want a picture of the poop if there's diatoms in it. <laughs> Only if there's diatoms in it? Well, it's, it's less exciting if there's... If it's just organic debris? It's just, yeah. Uh, I mean, that could be a diatom. Let's take a look. Uh, so, I don't necessarily... Yeah, that's a piece of a diatom. I don't necessarily need to have an SEM, but I also, now that I have an SEM, can do taxonomy and answer and ask uh, sort of taxonomic related questions better. And um, since we got the SEM, I've described something like 15 new species and we're working on describing another 10 or something. So um, the the access to the SEM, like regular access in my lab to an SEM makes a huge difference with respect to like what I can do. It's not that I, it's not that I can't do my work. It's like now I have two avenues of research I can explore and um, my students as well, because I train my students how to use the SEM, um, are capable of um, engaging and um, accessing like, you know, I'm, I'm working with Mallory to describe new species of diatoms and this summer we're going to do a bunch of research with students on the SEM so um, they actually can uh, ask questions or answer questions as well that um, that they wouldn't normally be able to, to work on and I think it opens a lot of opportunity for student research because um, you know, normal, normally, like, uh, science questions are a little bit too difficult. Like, the time investment for an undergraduate is um, immense. But, uh, but, like, if it's just on an SEM and we're looking at, like, the taxonomy of a diatom or something like that, um, those are questions they could answer. We could put the samples together, look at it in the light microscope, look at it on the SEM and characterize it and could potentially publish, publish it in the span of a couple of months. So um, that makes it something that like, you know, my students could actually use in their research or be engaged in actual research, right? So for um, asking questions or answering questions for them, I think it makes a huge difference as well. And I have um, undergrads in my lab and graduate students in my lab and I think that for both of them the SEM is extremely helpful. Um, I would also say that it's opened some doors between me and colleagues because um, a lot of my colleagues don't have access to an SEM so I can just say oh send me a sample we'll put it on and then um, and then I can collaborate with them so it actually allows me to contribute to their success as well. So, um, our Artful Turkey was saying that this looks like what they ate for breakfast. You ate poop, poop for breakfast? I don't think they realized that's what it was. It does have kind of a shredded wheat look. Uh, um, like a piece of sausage or something? Yeah. Where all the plankton gets, know. gets, uh, melded together? Yeah. Yeah, or the, the shredded wheat gets compacted, kind of granola-y. Yeah. All right, I'm going to get a picture of poop for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poop stream. <laughs> it is, but it's so cool. <laughs> I see I see a lot of this in the plankton, especially so the way um, w seasonally 
you get blooms of phytoplankton and then blooms of zooplankton, right? So one follows the other. And very often, once the zooplankton start to really ramp up, we see a lot of the poop. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's an indicator. It's one of the things that I notice um, as it increases, it tells me about what other things are in the water. So it's actually, it's really cool tool to have. This is kind of interesting to me as well because um, this particular piece of poop has gone through nitric acid. So, uh, because this is a clean sample. And is it? I think so. And it actually sh- sort of shows how, um, even with like pretty strong acids, uh, I mean, it was heated with nitric acid for like two hours, which would, I don't know, digest pretty much anything. But um, something's still holding it together, right? Uh, so uh, that aspect of it is kind of interesting to me that, you know, like all the orga- or most of the organic parts are gone, but it's probably because the, um, the acid can't penetrate as deeply into the internal parts. Um, you know, if it's really compacted poop and, uh, <laughs> and so it's still being held together, maybe, uh, the outside parts, all the organic materials gone and you can see the, um, the composition, like that's, uh, that's a little olicocyra valve and I'm not sure what this is, but that's definitely a diatom right there. Um, you know, you, you could actually look through the poop and maybe see what they were eating, which is kind of cool. Yes. I mean, and actually, scientists do that. Yeah. Um, not me. Um, not you, but other scientists do. So there was, um, let's see, there was a comment. Where was it? Where was it? Um, can we give a shout out to Artful did. Turkey, by the way? Yes, we can. There we go. If you're a streamer and I don't give you a shout out, let me know because I'm. I may not know you. I think they're one of Jay Renzella's uh, collaborators. They work together and I think they share a a Discord together. Headshot specialist, yes, this is really poop. (laughs) Would I lie about a thing like poop? There. Mm -hmm. It just says poop right on the actual label, so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a clean sample because it, look at how everything's like, you know, pretty clean. I don't see a bunch of gunk on everything, like usual. Yeah, wow. Let's see, I'm going to turn up the beam intensity so I can move around a little bit faster and see things still. Headshot Festivalist says, poop looking like a cool celestial body. <laughs> Uh, in the right light, I mean. Good news, everyone. Hey, we got a new follow. I think we got two follows. Uh, the tech, techie doc gave us a follow about three minutes ago, and the buff astronomer. Do you, do you think maybe they mean buff like color or like strong? I think strong. Okay. <laughs> I'm going with strong. Okay. They've been working out. The techie doc says they didn't know that these kinds of streams existed over Twitch. Well, uh, on an SCM, this is pretty much the only stream like this on Twitch. But if you're looking for other people who stream from microscopes, um, there's definitely people who do this. Uh, Pacific Plankton is also one of them. So I think uh, I got her stream address correct in the title you if you might be able to click on that so you see how it twists as it goes across the middle right here oh that's the one you were talking about the other day the scoli yes scoliopleura i think is its name scoliopleura yeah so cool you see the twist though it's like a torsion like the the valve's been kind of uh tweaked yeah it's a little easier to see from maybe a little closer than we are, but uh, it starts over here and ends up over there, right? So it's like 
doing like a twist, a very subtle twist. Dance move. So Andrew says, wow, that's very cool. I only very recently started working on an SEM or a dual beam to be precise as well, but I only use it to prepare samples and not really for acquiring data. Ah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I think SEM's just a pretty cool toy to play with, to have access to as an instrument, because for my work, uh, you, can, you can analyze diatoms on a light microscope, but, um, but it, I often compare a light microscope, like a transmitted light microscope, to an X-ray. So it would be like looking at everybody and everything through an X-ray and then trying to figure out like what they actually look like. So, um, you know, there's a problem with doing things that way, uh, which is that you don't actually understand what you're seeing Good all the news, time. Everyone. That's a little piece of skeletonema that's fallen out of its colony right here. Its spines are hanging out, holding onto nothing. And this one too, right? looks like it oh yeah oh, it's definitely skeletonema that's yeah. that's the classic skeletonema s sort of shape and structure for the spines and stuff so and that's a diplonese remember i was saying that they occur in marine realms pretty commonly and i've seen them a lot in these samples so here's what skeletonema normally looks like it's normally holding on to a neighbor like this guy lady if you like Clones holding hands. So the really tiny ones are the really old skeletonema. Yeah, a lot of the ones that we see on um, on your streams are usually pretty small. Oh, what did I find? What did you find? Oh, it's the triangle. Triceratium esque. Thing. Probably <laughs> that 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 one that I've been seeing. So they, I've been seeing them in little chains, the little twist riding chains. So cool, open set, yes, like a Dorito. We're um, Anakin Luke redeemed. Sylvia draws you a picture, but asked if I would draw instead, and I said sure. Oh, that's a great idea. I should make one. Pacific Plankton draws you a picture, and then uh... well, only when my voice is here <laughs> can I'm <stripping> with you. <laughs> No, whenever they want, you have to draw a picture. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, oh, I'm going to um, hang on a second. Uh, one, I got to change my beam intensity down to a, the number I want, and um, and then we're going to we're going to try to get this even better. Ariola. Areola, areola. Well, it depends on whether there's one or, or many. But this is the same word. It's just plural and singular. Areola is singular. Areola is plural. Plural. Yeah. See, it's still jogging a little left and right. It is, wow. I haven't seen it move that much in a long time. That's because normally it's me using it and then me using it. And I get the beam centered and the, um, the wobble perfect. And then everybody lives off of my perfect beam. And they don't mess with it. Mm. I mean, if they're wise, they don't mess with it, I guess. Oh, Binary Split wants to know, let's see, do you ever overlay microscopy and SEM images to make cool dual mode images? That's a neat idea. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that, actually. But, um, I don't know if people do that. I mean, not just not me, but I've never seen anything like that. Um, so you know the images where they have, like, pictures from, of, like, a road from a long time ago and you can like drag the slider left and right across the image. Yeah. It would be neat to do that with, you know, live and SEM view. Yeah, that would be super cool. 
See, this is what happens when I sit and tweak the image for a little while. That's just awesome. <laughs> Those little uh, covers on the areoli are super cool. Okay, let's... Um, I'm going to get a picture of our little Dorito. First and thing. so those are the cribra on the inside, right? Um, so the term for those is, uh, I think those are called rota. They're, um, it depends on where the little covering is. If it's on the inside of the valve and it's basically part of the internal sheet of silica, it's called a cribra. And if it's wedged kind of halfway between the inside and the outside like these are, and they're attached by uh, just little bars. So like the, the way that they attach, you can see that in here, there's like little tiny bars that are connecting and then the rest of it's kind of floating out in the middle. They have different names. Um, they're called Vola and Rota. They have like really specific, um, hang on. Uh, let's see if I can find it in the glossary because I sometimes forget them. Rhoda. Yes. A rhoda is a type of vellum, which is what all of these things are called, consisting of one or more bars across an areoli with or without a widened area in the center resembling a wheel with spokes. So I, now, my brain remembered what it was. Yeah, is that's... that from Diet Palms of North America? Could you pop the link into chat? Yeah, okay. yeah. That'd be cool. There you go. Thank so you. it doesn't, they normally have a picture with the database, but they don't have little pictures. But you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of occlusions, with the, which are what they call the vellum. Um, this sort of groups of occlusions. Um, Kerbera is from ones that are on the inside usually. Uh, with like little salt and pepper shaker heads. Those are called cribra or cribrum, uh, if it's one. And vola are like a sort of different type. Anyway, I should, I should provide them with some pictures because I actually am a contributor on this site and um, they need some pictures of these things. They do. Vola does have a, a picture for vola and we sometimes see those, but um, they don't have one for this one, so... All right, so there were a couple of other questions here. Let's see. It was um, Andrew Vaughn, um, correlative light electron microscopy is very popular in my field these days. More with TEM than SEM, though. And they say, do you study how they build these crazy structures as well? Um, I don't, um, because that is like the polymerization uh, process is sort of all biological, and I don't study like the physiometry, the physiology of, of diatoms. I study their skeletons and use it for taxono taxonomic purposes, which I then use for sort of ecological, paleoecological information. So I'm more interested primarily in the types of environments that a diatom lives in and then um, link that with a species, which I then can use for looking at the skeleton through time. So, um, you know, I, I think the polymerization of silica process is really interesting, but um, a biologist, news, really a biologist would, would be giving you that information, not me. Um, uh, I'm more of an ecologist and not really like a, a cell level biologist if that makes any sense look at this ecologist weird poor paleolimnologist yeah also sort of a taxonomist and you know a paleoclimatologist and like I do a lot of things so uh, but I leave the cell stuff with the soft parts to someone else <laughs> that's where I draw the line A ASDFF says mad scientist, you mean? A little bit uh, at times, but um, uh, I think you have to be creative to be a scientist, and it's underrated uh, with respect to what people um, 
think of when they think of good scientists. They usually think of people who are like logical and rigorous thinkers, but I think you actually have to be creative in order to be good at science. Um, I think it's actually a, a critical part of it is being able to not just see things, but to understand them. You need to, um, and you need to sort of get a perspective that requires creativity. So. I was going to say happy scientist, not mad scientist, but that's. <laughs> Well, I'm a pretty happy scientist, but that's because I like what I do. So, um, I like teaching. I like research. Uh, I could do without meetings, but the rest of it, I like what I do. So, um, in general, my job is fun, and um, and I like being able to explore things, either in the real world or also in these sort of like microscopic world that we're in here. So I'm just going to call this one Triceradium, even though I don't know if that's for real what it is. We should ask Anna. Where's Anna? You know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen, her, I haven't seen her on a stream in a while, but she was messaging me yesterday. Uh, she was congratulating me for uh, getting my vaccination. So, um, so she's, she's, you know, she's around. She's just not, hasn't been on the stream, so... I feel good about the focus right now, though. I feel like I got yeah. it. Yeah. So, usually once I get it set up, uh, get the stigmation where I want it and the wobble where I want it, then uh, it stays pretty good for the rest of the time. So, like I said, I feel pretty good about it. Well, I like it. <laughs> well, that's two of us. I'm then. pleased. Yay. And potentially 33 people in stream appreciating the clarity. Right. Hopefully they do. I worked hard to bring you this sort of clarity. But what did I see? We're a little too far out for me to uh, to catch up what I was looking at. You know, maybe it was just some debris. It's hard when uh, when there's so many little circles. There's a lot of little circles in your samples. There are. Oh, hey, mind of a snail is here. Hello, mind of a snail. We have a lot of uh, cool crossovers that uh, have happened, especially recently with Mind of a Snail and um, like Pea Chops and like you were, uh, were you on there, Pacific? Or do they had some of your images, no. just had some of your images on there? Yeah. Yeah. And I think they've threatened to put some of my images on there as well. Ooh. Mind of a Snail says, art and science together forever. Yeah, that's how I feel about it as well. So as somebody who obviously crosses that line frequently um, in both my drawings and my photography and uh, manipulation of SEM images, I guess, um, because I do post things that we collect here as images to Instagram. And um, I suppose I could do some of that. Oh, you beat me to it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I need to give you a little less warning. <laughs> now that you can uh, hear me in real time, I have to be careful. Oh, Andrew Vaughn wants to know, um, speaking of that, how do you do the pseudo coloring for the images in the slideshow on the right and on your Instagram? Those are all done um, with a program called Adobe Lightroom, which um, you can get like a free version of that program, I think. Um, I have a university license for the Creative Cloud. And um, so 
I use that on my iPad. So I just take these images, I dump them onto a USB drive, which I can then plug into my iPad, and I um, and then I just modify them primarily by um, changing the color associated with the um, the highlights, the um, uh, the shadow and the midtones, and you can use a lot of programs to just change those three aspects. And, um, and I, I do a little bit of cleaning up the images. Um, I mess around with the contrast settings and the, uh, the clarity. And um, I try to sometimes get rid of the, um, the noise. The SCM is a little noisy. So like relative to an actual camera, the SCM images have a lot of grain on them. And so I usually take them in to, um, to at least get rid of some of the graininess in the images. And then, um, and then, yeah, I just sort of play with it. Uh, I don't, I, I do sometimes then take those images over to um, Procreate, which is another tool that you can use with an iPad. So I have, uh, you have to buy that one, but, um, but, and then I will sometimes like uh, select aspects to modify more directly um, using Procreate. So that's more like um, uh, sort of selecting by contrast and making adjustments to specific colors or by throwing sort of a, a gradient over top of the images. So. Um, it sounds like I do a lot, but it actually doesn't take very long to do. So for most images, um, because I have a photography background and I know what, and I, I've done it a lot, I know what to do. Um, the hardest part for me is sort of trying to make a diverse selection of colors that I haven't been using, like trying to change my palette because, um, you know, like, I, I like the same kind of colors for different aspects of them, but I don't want it to always look like, oh, it's like this, you know, bright blue and purple and, uh, and something else kind of mixed together. So um, I have to spend a lot of time kind of futzing around with it to make it look different from the other images that I've already <laughs> modified. So. Are you drawing images? Mm -hmm. or is, are you drawing for... Uh, for the stream is that what you're doing pack no no not yet i'm just like entranced sorry <laughs> i'm like oh, wait what's that what's that <laughs> well if you see something you want me to stop on just let me know no i'm, I'm just enjoying it so much that's bacteriastrum that's yeah. what it looks like yeah that one's for and sure it's not an, yeah it's not an end so their end um valve of the chain looks different. It usually doesn't have the branching quite the same way on the Cite. It also has some sort of a structure here. Ooh. I don't know what those are. Little newts. Uh, maybe the connecting spines because they make yeah. colonies and I couldn't figure out like how the colony was being held together. Uh, but maybe those are the little spines that they use to hang on with. Maybe they just hold on through organic processes. So it's just glue, like diatom yeah, glue. Yeah, the normal sort of diatom glue. There's some more. There's a whole bunch of bacteria astrum in these samples. There's a couple mm -hmm. of them together right there. Yeah, wow. They make just like a mess when there's a whole bunch of them. They look cool when there's one. When they're all together, it looks like uh, bramble or something just like a yeah. mess yeah it looks like that in the light microscope too because lots of stuff gets stuck yeah. in those branching setae yeah that's a peralia i think not positive though huh those uh you know, barrel shaped things. There's a lot of them in your samples as well. Yeah. So could be something else. That's pralia for I sure right there. Yeah, I think a pralia is more of having like a weird 
See, I think that's Alerbeckia, no? That's Peralia? Yeah, that's Peralia. They have, like, these Colosseum-like structure. Ah. Um, oh, I can see now. There's the tiny little spines interlocking. Yeah. They're little U-shaped spines. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah. There. I'm going to get it in focus one of these days. Yeah, so you can see it. Uh, there are these sort of little U-shaped, uh, crenulate-shaped um, structures here that uh, link them together like poker chips. But the little open windows, those don't occur in Ellerbecki at all. So these little col okay. Colosseum-like structures, that's not an Ellerbecki feature. They're smooth or they've got little hexes over them. Little. Yeah. So that's Peralia. Probably Peralia sulcata. It's the only one I know, and it's the one every time I look at any Peralia, that's what it ends up being, so. Oh, here's one of those little guys, the Dorito on its side. Ooh. Yes. Let's see, I want maybe 90. Too far. Trying to get it straight up and down for us. And then I can actually zoom in on one of this front edge a little bit better. Focus. Ooh, look at that. You see those pork see covers those are the same. Mm -hmm. The same little rota pork covers. And now I can once I get it in focus, then I can move out a little bit and try to get it centered. So Andrew is saying, how do these things get energy? Do they photosynthesize or do they eat? Well, they definitely photosynthesize, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's always, there's nature finds a way to do weird things. Yeah, most diatoms are photosynthetic and most of them are uh, obligately photosynthetic, but there are some diatoms that are heterotrophic. Um, that means they can eat, um, usually it's like detritus, like they can consume detritus-like material. They don't really have like mouths, so um, it's more like acquiring nutrients and using that for energy. There's also, I mean, there's so many weird things in, in the microscopic world. There are diatoms that are um, like symbiotic with other organisms. Um, like dinoflagellates do this a lot, uh, but I think there's actually even diatoms that are in a symbiotic relationship where they're like an endosymbiont inside something else. So um, I don't remember which one those are, but um, that's kind of weird because in the freshwater realms and in parts of the shallow waters of the marine realm, there's um, endosymbiotic relationships where the diatoms have something inside of them uh, that's like a nitrogen-fixing bacteria. So all of the epithemia, ropolodia group are like this. They have like specialized, I don't know, prison cells where they keep the cyanobacteria as prisoners. Uh, that work for them and uh, and then there's diatoms that are actually that same in that same setting uh, in a larger organism in some larger organisms which is super weird to me that's crazy yeah it's like when Goofy has a dog and the dog is Pluto and you're like what but Goof <laughs> Goofy's a dog and he's got a dog as a pet prison cells says Andalor. And Andrew says, well, I mean, we humans do that too. Unfortunately. Uh, that is such a beautiful picture. Oh my gosh. I do my best. And it's quite small too. What's the size on... I can't see the size right now. 10 microns is the scale bar and the total width is 38 microns. So that's the yeah. height, also the height in this case. Yeah.
because normally I can just see them and know what they are, but I can't really resolve them, especially when they're alive. They're they're like little fuzzy green triangle-like shapes. <sighs> wow. Sort of lost oh, track of time. Just trying to figure out what was going on today. It's already two twenty. Yeah. It's almost noon for you. It is. <laughs> My coffee's gone cold, but that's okay. Oh yeah, Spirit Walkers is a new follower. Thank you for following, and also ASDFF underscore. I'm just going to call this one Triceradium in Girdle View. Perfect. So, Anna wants to know... Good news, everyone! Um, Anna wants to know what material you look at. So right now this is Diatoms from San Francisco Bay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I look at all sorts of things. Uh, on here but this is plankton um, a lot of times I'm looking at sediment core samples so we're looking at material that have been fossilized and sort of stored in the earth for centuries or sometimes millions of years and then uh, the diatom skeletons will be preserved so we'll um, take them out in the, in the form of a core, chop it up, and I can digest the sample and still get the diatom skeletons out of them. I like stored in the earth. Yeah, we're just going to store those in the earth for now. I mean, it's where I keep all my stuff. That's stored in the earth. <laughs> well, more or less on the earth, I guess. Uh, that's the, really the way I think of them. They're archives, right? They're like a, a temporary storage place before I get to them, hopefully. Hopefully I'll get to them. Well, here's one of those giant uh, odonteloids. Not a chain, but oh, yeah. just a big, yes. big, big one. They're always covered with junk, even when they're clean. Yeah. They just got a rough texture, I think. Uh, let's see. I'll, let's move to a different one. Okay. And Binary Split. Um, it's from um, Baywater, collected near the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco Bay. With a plankton net. It was only a couple tablespoons of liquid with diatoms in it. Ketoceros everywhere, as usual. Yeah. Seasonal. Look at all the girdle bands, hey, too. Hey, Maori Sally. Oh my goodness, Micah. Micah is gifting subs left and right, diatoms. Uh-oh. I, I know. Five tier one subs to the community. Wow. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Newt, newt. <laughs> Aww. Surprised us with an attack of subscriptions for people. That is so cool. And Van wants to know, is all of the large round ones one single dominant species? No. Um... It depends, and I am neglecting a lot of these little round guys because we've seen them so frequently on the stream, uh, and there's so many of them, but uh, they're, they're mostly Thalassia syra, and, which is a genus, not a species, and then um, some of them are also Cassinodiscus, which is also very common in these samples and in the marine realm in general. And this one... It's not quite a circle. Uh, this is Asteropolis, 
and this is an internal view. So um, it just seemed really clean when I saw it. It is. And now I'm going to fix it. <laughs> so the image is clear. Oh, look at that. And then we'll move back out. Actually, maybe I'll move back in so I can look at those pores because I think I can actually see the pores inside here. Oh, wow. Those Great. are on, on the outside, but the, mm -hmm. um, the structure is sort of coming through as we look through the holes, right? It's a little dark. It is. Uh, I mean, I could fix that if I did something like this, and then this, and then this. Um, so it'll just try to give us the brightness and contrast inside the little box, hopefully. And usually that brightens the image a lot, but it'll make this stuff out here that's lighter very light, so it'll look like it's glowing. Um, but we'll be able to see the actual pores a little bit better. Ah, there we go. I think that's about oh. as good as you can get without, like, destroying the outside image. These have always been one of my favorite marine diatoms, and they still are. They're just so interesting looking. They're lumpy yeah. and slightly asymmetric, and I don't know, they just have like a weird, you know, this sort of star shape is really kind of interesting. Like sand dollars. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's all right. Now you have a t-shirt like that, or a, uh, one of those images on your red bubble. Yeah. If you really like it, you can check it out there. The, um, the image that I used to draw them from, that I used as a reference, uh, had junk over a lot of the middle part of it. And so I had to sort of just like guess what it looked like under the junk. <laughs> uh, Interpret. Well, we were seeing them very rarely uh, at the time and in yeah. the samples. And so I didn't have any really good pictures of it um, where everything was clear, you know. So it was like uh, kind of like the lower part down here was all junked over with stuff in the picture that I had. And so um, I just sort of used what was there on the other side to kind of predict what was going on on this side but was less than perfect as a result I felt so still looks pretty good but could have been a little bit better looks really, looks really good mind of a snail says yes related to sand dollars question mark so gorgeous so they are not related to sand dollars in the sense that they're a single celled algae and a sand dollar is an animal but I suppose we're all related when it comes down to it. <laughs> we're all fish. If you, go, if you go, well, if you go back far enough, we're even, you know, less than fish, more than fish. Which way? Less than, more than? Uh, equal to. Equal to? Yeah. So Andrew Vaughn wants to know, it says, you mentioned earlier that you routinely describe new species. What do you typically name them after? Um, I try to name them, if I can, um, I have sort of like uh, priorities. And if it's something that's really old, that nobody is likely going news, to, to regularly see unless they're looking in the fossil record, I tend to name those after people. 
um, people who are scientists who are working in that area that um, are linked with the site somehow potentially or who had worked in there before I got there or something like that because um, my my higher priority if it was like a modern species something that people see regularly is to name it after the shape that it has rather than after a person and the reason that I do that is because I want it to be something that you will remember the name because of what it looks like so um, you know we named something after sunflowers because it looked like a sunflower for example or um, uh, some characteristic about it that is very distinct so um, if I can't do that I will sometimes name it after a place so if it's um, if it's an endemic species or we think it's an endemic species I try to name it after the site where we found it and I try not to do that unless I think it's an endemic species that we wouldn't see elsewhere so then you would link the name together with the place right so like my strategy is based on trying to think about like um, how are people going to remember this name and how can I name it something that will like stick the best um, with that organism so uh, s sort of that's sort of my priority so I start with like does it have a characteristic shape or appearance and I try to use the Latin expression for whatever that is and then if I can't do that, then I'll name it after the place. And then, like, worst case scenario, I'll name it after a person. So, um, for modern stuff. For ancient stuff, it's usually the reverse. It's usually, like, um, people first. Um, because I feel like it's, uh, it's an, uh, sometimes it's, honor, it's an honor to work at a site where somebody else has already done a bunch of work like that. Um, and I like to particularly do it if it's, like, somebody who whose papers I read a lot on that particular topic or site or whatever, or they're like, like we named one after um, uh, David Jusen because he uh, helped me understand Olicosiris. So we wanted to name an Olicosiris after him in part because I was a little confused why he didn't already have something named after him. Um, you know, he had, I don't think he had any diatoms named after him, but he's been in the field for, you know, 50 years doing incredible work. So, it, you know, those people I try to just sort of pick out and um, and honor them with some sort of a just sort of a name. But you can name it after whatever you want. Um, you you have the freedom. Mind of a snail. Yeah, mind of a snail wants to know: Did you name one after yourself? Sorry. That's the one thing you actually can't do um, in the taxonomic literature for. Uh, for plants, which is where the diatoms are dumped, uh, we follow the botanical um, taxonomic code. You cannot name it after yourself. And um, I would actually argue that I wouldn't name it after myself anyway. Um, that's actually the thing that I'm least interested in doing. Um, and part of the reason for that is uh, it's cute to name something after yourself or whatever, I suppose, but um, I feel like that's like nominating yourself for an award. You know what I mean? Like, um, if you really deserved it, somebody else would name something after you. You wouldn't have to name it after yourself. So um, I aspire to be worthy of having something named after me, but I, I don't want to be the person who does that. So if that makes any sense. Um, that's just the way I view, you know, there's enough people out there naming diatoms that I'm sure eventually somebody will find what I do valuable enough to name something after me, but it, it, I don't want it to be me, so. Cool. Mind of a Snail thinks more humans should name their babies after diatoms. <laughs> uh... I don't know if I agree with that, but I'm not opposed to it. Uh, as somebody who had to name a, a human, um, I felt like it was actually really difficult for us to come up with a name. Um, and in fact, I looked through, for, like my daughter, when we, look, when we named my daughter, uh, we could have named her after a diatom, but um, neither my wife nor I had any interest in that. Um, 
but I looked through like every baby book name and I just like hated everything except for like maybe five of them and um part of it's because uh my last name is stone so like I have to pick something that can't be turned into like <laughs> a a sentence um or uh, a weird descriptor for a person you know because they've already got stone in the name so mm. um uh for example, Sandy would have been a really bad choice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or, I don't know if it's a guy, Flint. I feel like you could make really bad choices with, um, with the last name that's an object. And then the poor student is going to be, or poor child is going to be uh, tormented forever by, I don't know, the Meet the Flintstones soundtrack every time they do anything. So... Uh, well, anyway, um, <laughs> it's hard naming people. It is. It's easier for me to name diatoms, actually. Because I can just look up something that I think is sort of reminds me of in Latin and then stick that on there as a name. And um, I've never had anybody complain about what I named something. I'm, I'm actually kind of waiting for that to happen, but it hasn't. Um, where, like somebody's like why would you pick this name but uh diatom people are generally pretty cool about stuff and i think they don't care what you name things so there's some pretty funny names in our in the diatom world funny yeah like the name of the diatom is pretty funny like what what's a funny diatom name now i need to know uh, maybe I'll find some for you, uh, off, uh, and then maybe we'll, I'll share those with you. Uh, you're streaming on Monday, right? Yes. So maybe I'll show up and, uh, give you some of those on Monday. Um, but, uh, this guy, David Jusen that I was talking about earlier, he named a diatom, like, Comica, as a last name. Uh, as the species name, I mean, um, because mm-hmm. it looked like uh, a person with their mouth open, like they were laughing, um, just as an example. Like, you can, you um, can name it whatever you want, so they, but they picked that name because it, it's sort of like they thought it looked like a, a face, right? Um, oh, wow. But th- there's some that are actually pretty funny, so if you know the backstories. Um, but there's a lot of diatoms that are named like... Um, uh, inconspicua or uh, like names where they clearly were unhappy with the diatom that they found which I'll try to give you some <laughs> examples of on Monday I don't want to spoil them but okay okay Andrew Bunn was saying something in chat in the gene world there's very funny ones out there like brunch pilot <laughs> brunch pilot uh, which is a German word for crash pilot. <laughs> okay. And the gene was found in flies who kept crashing, caused by neurological defects. <laughs> Perfect. See? I would like to pilot some brunch right about now into my mouth. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't eat lunch? Well, I couldn't have because uh, the stream started at noon. And I have to, I mean, it started at one and I have to get in. Uh, you know, by noon, if I want to stream, I've got to set stuff up. I have to apparently poorly set up the Discord uh, channeling at least once. So uh, we're currently looking, by the way, at the external view of a Cassinodiscus, um, one of the round guys, and I, I just really like this uh, crazy polygonal pattern with the little circles in the middle and um you can actually see underneath like inside um in here so these are the um an external layer of silica you can actually see the basal silica layer which is this one that's in here um inside that little hole there's another opening so it's like there's a hole and then in like kind of a chamber and then another hole and if we were looking at the inside of this diatom uh, which I think this is perforatus. 
Uh, mm. These would be the rima portula. These are the rima portula openings on the valve face. And Those. there would be a cribra on the inside as well. So um, there's another layer of silica with a different type of um, occlusion over it. Wow. But you can see the basal siliceous layer down here, like inside. You can see those little openings that are like inside of the holes. And then the outer layer, which is this one, the secondary layer. It's just so beautiful. Well, I figured since I stuck us in the visual ASMR tag today that I should probably do some images that are kind of visual ASMR, like this one. I mean, I think all diatoms are kind of visually stunning at this scale. Hey, Mama Bon Bon's here. Hello. Did I miss you before? Commander Von has to leave and grab some food. Oh, thanks for Glad hanging out. Could. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Hey, District 10, did you see you got uh, a gift subscription? You can use the Diatom emotes now. I think I saw that Micah had given you out one. And you can use channel points to modify them. What did you do to it? What did I, what did I do to it? To modify it. Oh, with the channel points? Put on sunglasses on my diatoms. I like to flip them. I like to mirror them because then you can use them next to each other, especially the... Um, Suriella, let's see here, because then you can, um, let's see, when it's mirrored, you can do in both ways, like that, and they look like little wings. Ah, well, you could have had all four of them. You were so close. could have had the other corner and made a perfect little box. I could have. Still no, no Carethron, huh? I'm not seeing any. Man. Boozy. Well. Boozy, silly question. Just arrived. What are those perfect circles? Perfect circles are diatoms. We're looking at diatoms from the plankton of San Francisco Bay. Which are samples that were collected by Pacific Plankton, who's also here as a disembodied voice. Hello. Which is better than earlier when she was here, but as a disembodied voice in my head and not for everybody else. It's the ghost in the plankton. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise known as the text to chat. Right. Or voice to text. Text to voice. I'll get it eventually. Well, I greatly prefer the version where people can hear you besides just me. So. Ooh, what's Glad this? Glad to be heard. Ooh. Uh-huh. Plera Sigma. Is it, does it have a decussate pattern? It does. You want to see it? No, it's okay. We can, I want to find Carethron. I really do. It'd be so cool. Um, well, it should be in here somewhere. How frequent, how frequently did it occur in the sample that you sent me? That's a good question. So I was, I would find it on at least once on each slide of um, live material. Hmm. So not that frequently, but more frequently than something crazy like um, 
arachnidiscus. Well, I haven't seen any arachnidiscus, so... I know. I think they would be obvious in the SEM. I mean, I've seen them in the SEM before as fragments, but... Um, but I think they would stand out in this set of round things. Oh, it's an external view of Astrompolis. Actinopticus. Uh, oh, also, Astrom there was also an Actinopticus, but that one was Astrompolis. The A diatoms. There's a bunch of them. In fact, I think that's probably the most common letter for the planktic uh, genera to start with in the marine realm. Really? Yeah, there's like Aliscus and Holocasyra and uh, like. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, Actinocyclus, Actinopticus, Astronopolis. It's like a, a song from... Uh, <laughs> what are those? Uh, Tiny Toons. Did you watch Tiny Toons? <laughs> I don't think I watched Tiny Toons. Uh, I think you missed out. That's actually a pretty good show. I think I came just before the whole like that they're that they were like the the tiny or the baby versions of the older mm -hmm. sort tunes. of yeah yeah I, I I was in on the when they were just tunes oh I era, mean so was I and not the and not the like the tiny tiny versions where they like babyfied babyified everything well I had a um. I had a roommate in college who liked cartoons, like, you know, all the time would watch cartoons. So uh, I watched them because I was forced to. <laughs> you were forced to. Well, I guess I could have left the room. Yeah. He would... Um, he would wake up every morning and watch Thundercats. Aww. And then uh, that's how he started his day. <laughs> so, <laughs> which I was okay with. It's just that, like, yeah. I, that's how I woke up as well. <laughs> Sometimes you just need Thundercats to get out of bed. Yeah. Uh, except for the one time that was a little disturbing, which is that. Um, he looked up at me because I was on the top bunk and he was on the bottom bunk and he goes, Chitara is so hot. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Hard to take him serious after that. Okay, uh, let's move over to another stub and see if we can find magical, uh, mysterious, missing minion cool. diatom. Oh, yeah. so there's another little triangle guy. I'm doing a good job finding the little triangle guys. Now we got an inside view. An inside view? Yeah. I don't think we've had an inside view yet. No, we Ooh. haven't. Ooh. See, I'm doing a great job of finding triceradium. If I do say so. You, you, well, you're doing a brilliant job of it. It's got the... Um, there's like a, a rib holding, kind of going across the oh, corner the, tips. Yeah. Because we can kind of see that through the, um, the external view. You can. Uh, and then these things, probably mm -hmm. not obvious to you, but those are Rimaportula, for sure. They're the mouth. Yeah, they got a little mouth on them. Got a pretty mouth on them. It does. Can you take a picture? Of just this or of the whole thing? Of the whole thing. Yes, I was planning to do that. Thank you. I don't know. I thought maybe I could get that in a little bit better, but I don't think I can. This I can, though. That looks okay. More Doritos, only inside Doritos.
It looks very architectural, the inside. You mean with this sort of costy, the dividing ribs? Yeah, and then the, it's like there's a kind of a ledge around mm. at, the, at the very corner that reaches over. This part. Like these ones? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is called a pseudoseptum. I think it needs to be brightness adjusted, but otherwise is looking pretty good. I hear so pencil if that's scratching. A pseudoseptum, <laughs> I know. So if that's a, I'm taking notes. If that's a pseudoseptum, what's an actual septum? Like, have we seen an actual septum it, since now we've seen a pseudo one? And how um, do you tell the difference? A pseudoseptums are attached to the actual valve. Good news, everyone. The the valve. Um, so on either end of the diatom is the valve, right? So in between is girdle bands. Mm -hmm. And um, some diatoms have extra pieces that are between them. And so if you think of a diatom in like a giant Dagwood Bumstead sandwich, some of them also have like a lettuce layer and a meat layer, right? Um, and when they have the extra layers, the extra layers, if they have a structure that's like that, is called a costi, or it's called a septum. So when it's on the valve, it's a pseudoseptum. When it's off of the actual um, valve, but internally present, then it's a, a septum. Oh. It's just a technicality as to where it is. How it attaches. Yeah, like on this one, it's actually part of the valve. So yeah. You wouldn't mistake it. I'm going to try to so here's a brightness inside okay. here and see if that helps. It might make this a little blown out, but I think it will look better than... This is still looking pretty dark in here. Mm. Bluesy says, um, and here I thought the middle of the nose was a septum. It is. Um, diatom names often have other human body part names that they're related to. Well, this looks really good, but I wonder what it looks like when we see the whole thing. Mm. Oh, it'll just be bright. That's okay. I feel like it's better to have the uh, main part of the diatom in the right, like visible, and the outside edge be like glowing than it would be the other way around. Maybe it's a little too bright though. Oh, what do you think? Something in between. Something just like... Oh, forcing me to do it manually, I see. weird I have the brightness all the way down it doesn't seem to matter no it's the contrast that's all the way up that's why yeah uh -huh. Harry Potter says what is um, what is it a scan of Harry Potter's here Harry well, yeah. And Rams Reef? Are they going to like uh, do magic for us? It's, let's see, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I think this is a little bit in between. At least you can see some of the, glows a little bit, but it's a little dark in here. Well, we'll, we'll run with it and then uh, my other option is to take two pictures, one where the middle part's exposed and one where the outside is exposed, and then like stack tweak, it. stack it, or I could have it where it's a little underexposed and then fix it with Photoshop. 
so. Harry Potter says I thought you were doing the magic. <sighs> um, we are looking at the uh, diatoms from San Francisco Bay. This is the diatom triceratium, or that's what we're calling it at least. And um, it's an internal view of the, of the diatom. So the diatoms um, look a little bit different from the inside and the outside, but this is the skeleton of a diatom. Um, their cell walls are made out of silica, which preserves and makes skeletons in, um, after we've processed them. So we're looking at it in the SEM. And it's slightly overexposed because I want to actually be able to see the inside of the valve. Which I think I did an okay job with, but needs to be toned down. Well, that looks good. Jurgling's here. Hey, Jurgling, how you doing? And who said, is that skeleton or diatom? Skeletor, the diatom. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't think this diatom was on He-Man as a villain, but I suppose it's possible. This is the first time we've seen the inside of it. Yeah. Look at those giant uh, Ruma Portula. So they're not mantle with Portula? Nope. Uh, they don't appear to have any of those. It looks like they just have Ruma Portula. Got it. But I can't see under the pseudoscepta, so I could be wrong. But it doesn't look like it. This is... rating internal and I mean we could look around for some more of them and see if we can find a let me fix this first um, see if we can find a uh, a view where they're at an angle where we might be able to see into the under the lip but at least for now it doesn't look like they are, have anything other than the uh, Rima Portulos. And Harry Potter says, always wondered what does a normal tree leaf look like under an amscope? Could you do that? Well, um, I know that we can do it because we have actually looked at tree leaves under the SEM. Um, that's something that we did quite a bit in the fall. Um, we've been uh, looking at sort of a whole range of different things, um, we I have some uh, undergrad students who would just go out into uh, campus and go grab some things. So mushrooms and tree leaves and plants and whatever. Uh, and we'd put those on the SEM. And we do that occasionally here as well. So um, you could probably check some of the old video on demands. Um, or if you can't find them, you might go to my U YouTube channel uh, where I would have stored them because it's been longer than two months. Um, but we will do it again. Um, you know, uh, we will, I think once, now that it's starting to like uh, not be covered with snow all the time, we'll probably be doing some more pollen. And um, I had this crazy idea uh, in the in the fall that when the real pollen season gets here that I might just take an SEM stub and mount it onto my bike and then go ride around um, like 
like one where I do like a ride to school and then one where I do like I ride around uh, the stadium here at Indiana State because our stadium has every tree from Indiana planted uh, there's like 130 different kinds of trees in Indiana they're all planted on um, around our stadium in one little area and um, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to like just you know uh, open up like a little bit of tape and ride around uh, the stadium a few times on my bike and try to capture all of them and uh, and see what ends up in in the on the tape right and I can just put that directly into the uh, the SEM which I think would be kind of cool so it's this guy it is that guy it's the Catoceros cyst for Didymus right I think I don't know so the more I look at it the more it confuses me because there's another one that that has something oh so there was a question what is your YouTube channel that uh, comes attacks people can find it do you have a YouTube yeah you can just uh, um, it's just a diatoms attack if you if you search that you'll find it also I've been working on a side project um, through another group of people where we do um, uh, lectures and um, things through Spirit Spirit University is the name of the channel. Um, and I've been doing lectures as a VTube character named Dr. Mo. And um, you can also find that on YouTube. So I've been doing lectures about uh, cool stuff. I try to keep it separate from what I'm doing here um, from my Twitch channel. But... Um, if you're into VTube characters or you want to see me give a lecture about extreme extremophiles or uh, hydrothermal vents, both of those lectures are up. And then I've been sort of channeling my uh, late night microscope streams as my office hours for that character, which is Friday nights. Um, I do a little late night hangout on the microscope, uh, on the light microscope, not the SEM. But... Um, been doing that on my YouTube channel with uh, Dr. Mo as well. All right, <laughs> Ram's Reef, he's a VTuber. Okay, so I so it looks also a little bit like the Catasteros radicans. Oh, not a cyst. So here's a question. Well, maybe not. See, that's the thing, right? So this is clean, so it's not in a chain, but it says chains straight or slightly curved, twisted about the chain axis. CK arising from just inside the valve margin, all bent out transversely, intercalary setae with hair-like siliceous spines. And it seems like they've got hair-like spines on them. Yeah, they look like little roots. Aperture is narrow. Yeah. It says aperture is narrow and elliptical with central constriction. Aperture. Apertures narrow. Is that where the setae enter the diatom? I don't know what that term means. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what an aperture is. I didn't think diatoms had <laughs> apertures. I thought cameras had apertures and chrysophytes have apertures. Mollusks have apertures. I didn't know diatoms had an aperture. Maybe it's the name for where the 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 setae enter Must be. the valve. Yeah. Must be. Do you think we could see it on this one? Uh, well, we'll see something. I don't know how, how well we will to tell what we're seeing, but I mean, is that described from the SEM? I don't know. It's because I don't think you could see that in a, in, in a, a light, light microscope, light microscope at, all. at all. You'd be able to see this sort of like, you know, long, hairy, uh, setae, but I don't know that you'd be able to see the apertures themselves. And I'm curious. It doesn't specify. Well, I'll go look. They look kind of pinched. So maybe it's Catoceros radicans. Radicans. Well, I got you a nice yeah. picture of it, so. It's very cool, my goodness. You could at least look at it all you like. Over and over. I think there's a 
um, just to the right of this image is a um, where the image is taking place rather is a the Thalassia Syra Weiss Flogii too that I saw all the central tubes sort of sticking out mm. thought maybe that would be kind of cool because I think it's an internal view we'll go look there next so look at that one Cite. it comes it's got all these little bits comes out and then it kind of folds down over the top of a piece of junk and then out along the edge of that other diatom so long. Yep. Harry Potter wants to know what's the most mental horizon expanding thing that you've seen under the SEM? Oh, I don't know about that. That's a. Mm. There's a lot. Um, I mean, I. Th I don't think that's Weiss Floggy. I think it's something else. Yeah. Those. Those are. Those are... It's probably Thalassia Syra. Rimaportula, though, I think. The, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I think that's a Rimaportula, though. Uh, I'm a little confused why it has a whole bunch of Rimaportula in the middle. Um, I also am not sure that that's... Not sure what's going on right there. Because that looks like the outside of the diatom. Is mm. it inside or outside? If it's that's the inside. If that's the inside, there are no strutted processes at all. <laughs> you know what's really funny? I just realized I was tilting my head to look at it and I looked and I saw. <laughs> I'm trying to figure Touching out what's going on. If this is the inside, and there's there's yeah. no strutted processes, uh, there is, however, that's a rimaportula out here on the margin, but there's no strutted processes. So nothing. So this can't be at the Lassia Syra. Mm. So... But that That's means Anna. it only has Rima Portula. Here's another one. Oh no, that's a piece of junk. That's not even a Rima Portula. I think that's just junk around the margins. Uh, oh. But it does have this in the middle, which is super weird. Which is like a whole bunch of Rima Portula together. Crazy. All right, I think there's a picture of that. Uh, in my book. Let me look it up. Oh, yeah? I think maybe. Okay. I'm going to go back and look for this uh, aperture structure we were talking about because I forgot. Cool. Thank you. And I will see if I can find... Ooh. I mean, I don't know. They just look like V-shaped. But it, it does kind of like... I mean, it's so weird. Oh. I can't see anything special. No. No. Bummer. It's very cool, though. It's a very devilish-looking diatom. It is. Ring of Fortune is junk, says Mind later. What? I think it's like Rim of Portula. Oh. Ring of Fortune. <laughs> Ring of, the Rim of Portula is junk? <laughs> could be. Some of it could be. So there were diagrams. So. I like that name, though. Ring of Fortune? That's a good autocorrect. What is closed caption? Oh, it's what closed captioning says. Nice. <laughs> That's the best. 
uh, I have this uh, for classes where I use the closed captioning and it tracks what I'm saying, but it's not good with science terminology, obviously. And um, some of the best ones I used to, like whatever it would come back with, I would copy them and paste them into like my Facebook page for my friends to see like the terrible translations that it was doing. Um, Cause some of them are pretty funny and borderline vulgar. What does what S stand for? S. It's the, it's, um, so there's a little drawing here and it's the like S Stellaris. I'm like, oh, here we go. Stellarima has an interesting arrangement of, um, Stellarima, I've never even, what? Stellarima. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Ooh. I'm trying to figure it out. Ooh. Oh, it's clean. What's going on here? There. Hello, weird little hairs. What the heck? <laughs> it's, it's growing a silica parachute. It doesn't want to say. What the heck? Is that is that on both sides? I don't know. It's Maybe? it's they're here. It's little hairy. It's got a little mustache. <laughs> look yeah. up! Look at the top of these little antenna structures. These are also super cool. It's like a little... Oh my gosh. Three, not just pork. Three prong yeah. toothed openings. Wow. These are crazy diatoms. And so these should have uh, a celly on the ends of these things. We can't see them, of course. Because it's... Oh no, yeah. It's right here. It's like pointed away from us um, in the camera. Well, not camera, but SEM. trying to. <laughs> Let's see if I can. Get it to be a little bit better. about as good as I think I can make it. That's so cool, though. Wow. It's just see. so crazy. If we do that and do this. Harry's shoulders. Man, that's super weird. Yeah. Well, I like it when a diatom comes with a beard. <laughs> it's a good look. <laughs> I like a strong beard game, no matter where it is. Okay. It's 
looking pretty sharp. It really is. Wow. All right. We'll just take a picture of this little beard and then I'll get one of the whole valve. And I can maybe see what chat's been saying. <laughs> Hairy shoulders. Craziness. Harry Potter wants to know what does human skin look like under the SEM? And is there a video for that? Um, it turns out that I have not stripped skin off of any person, uh, Harry, but, uh, and I also prefer if nobody donates pieces of their skin for me to look at in the SEM. <laughs> um, but, uh, let me see about it. Maybe I can, um, maybe I can get some of my own skin, you know, like, uh, from a blister or something. You get sunburn. You might peel. Yeah. Or, um, we'll see if I can find some of my own. We'll put that on there. If you're super interested. Oh, wow. It's a good-looking shot. It's really good. Uh, I'm glad I spent a little bit of time at the beginning of the screen cleaning up our image. Because these are some good ones. Yeah. <laughs> Sunburn for science. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to get enough sun for me to get sunburned soon uh, in order for that to happen, I suppose. trying to figure out what that thing was in the center um of the no, round one the, uh, the, yeah stellarima Is one yeah yeah all right i gotta look it up Let's see if i can find it not just in the book Uh, are electrons oh. teleporting from the hairy thing to the microscope? Well, they're not teleporting. They are uh, just moving normally, but they move pretty fast. So uh, I would argue that they are, I don't know. What is this thing? Hemialis? Odontella? Odontella. In my old book. I'm going to call it hairy shoulders. Call it hairy shoulders. I think that's the best bet. Yeah. So I'm going to say the... We don't tell if it was... Because there's one that's on its own. I think it's Longicursus or Oriata. And I don't know... Let's see. Hold on. It's got the short shoulders. Oriata. Probably. No. Nah. It's just wild. Short shoulders. Yeah, but see, but the the it looks it it looks more like longicursus. Longicurvus. Good news, everyone. Let's see. Okay. So. Let's see, where do I want the... Maybe that. Maybe there? Mm.
I think that's as good as it's going to get. Yeah. That's gorgeous. So, the, um, the, Good news, everyone. the way that the scanning electron microscope works is that there's an electron gun at the top of it that's firing electrons down on the specimen, and the beam actually hits the sample, and some of the electrons from the electron beam will knock electrons out of the sample. And so what you're actually seeing are those electrons basically bouncing out or um, or being uh, deflected out of the original specimen. And then if you look at this thing that's right below me down here, that's the inside view of the chamber. So the little cone-shaped thing is where the gun is firing onto the sample. The sample is um, on the little stubs, and then the electrons are hitting it and going to this thing that's sort of over here in the corner uh, that looks like a sorry wrong corner uh that looks like the uh, a little grating and um that has a a positive charge so the electrons have a negative charge they're drawn towards it and so they're not actually teleporting but they move very quickly um and then it gradually scans across the image back and forth so the image that you're seeing the one that's being made for you is um constructed it looks like a photograph but it's not using light at all it's just using electrons that are scanning over that sort of microscopic surface back and forth and um, when it does it captures how many of those electrons are hitting the sensor at each one of those pixels basically and then it provides a brightness value for that and then basically as it moves it changes the brightness and then it creates a picture so And ha! Huh. Can a normal man buy an electron microscope? Um, well, I'm a normal man, um, at least by all accounts, and um, it's expensive. Let me put it that way. Uh, There's no government restrictions against people buying electron microscopes. Correct. Uh, you could own one if you have like $150,000 or something. If you want to sell your house and buy an SEM and live inside of it. Um, I mean, some people's houses are worth way more than that. And uh, yeah, you could get one. They're expensive. Um, the cheaper ones are something like I want to say sixty or seventy thousand um, dollars, but they don't do as good of a job with uh, the images, and um, you know, you'd still have an SEM though. So there's that. Gov says so. The microscope is firing electrons at the hairy thing, and some of the electrons bounce back, and those get detected, and a picture is formed. Yep, that's it. So it's, um, I can show you some like sciencey diagrams, but they're just going to show you the same thing. So uh, that's basically how it works. Good news, everyone. Oh. Oh, that was really cool. <laughs> sorry, noises in my house. It's lunchtime. Sorry. Uh, we got follows I from Discrete Games and Foomp and uh, Attila here from Italy, apparently. Uh, Harry Potter. Good news. Uh, guy equals eight pig um, and art of DHT. So thank you all for following. Speaking of lunch, are you going to get some lunch soon? You've been streaming oh, yeah. an extra half hour longer than I thought you would. Um, I usually try to end at... Uh, there's another Odontella. Usually try to end at um, three thirty ish, so maybe I'll find one more and then uh, get a picture of it, and then we'll call it a day. And then I'll can we fi find Carethron? I want to find it so bad. Well, I can't promise mm -hmm. anything. 
Uh, with respect to what we'll find, uh, I've been looking. I know. So, you know. It's so cool. We found such amazing things. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of cool stuff in these samples. And that makes it easy to find them. Uh, but a lot of times the SEM's like a snark hunt, you know? You're, you're out... <laughs> trying to hunt the wampus and uh and sometimes you just can't find it so uh and that's actually probably the only thing i ever find even remotely frustrating about using a scanning electron microscope is that uh it it's hard to find what you want and then usually when you find it it's it's covered with junk or what was that noise was that a cheer uh, oh thank you for the cheer oh, yeah um yeah so sometimes when you find it it's covered with junk and then it's like oh mm. like i found it but it's not a good picture right so and harry potter wants to know if you have an SEM in your house or <laughs> in an education institution uh this one is in my lab um so this is my scanning electron microscope lab that's a radial airing um and there's a really cool detillum straight up and down into the camera here mm. straight down on it um no but i have microscopes at my house um i am just a humble scientist and i can't afford to have an sem in my house um i would get one if i could in fact, uh, when people used to ask me, what would you get if you won the lottery? I would be like, oh, I'd just buy a bunch of SEMs. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would buy a bunch of SEMs and then I would hire a bunch of my diatomist friends uh, and we would just look at stuff in the SEM all day. That's what I would do. Uh, so cool. If I had, I don't know, millions of dollars that I could just throw at it, that's what I would throw at it. Uh, so the nice part is I don't need millions of dollars to do that. Uh, it's also part of my job. So get yourself a job where you think that's what I would do if I won a million dollars. That's a pretty cool way of looking at it, right? That's um, a really cool way of looking at it. Because then I like what I do enough that basically, I mean, if I got money, I would keep doing it. Um, I, I wouldn't just like quit my job. I think I would just do what I wanted to do with my job a little bit more and... Um, and try to make science more accessible to people and look at stuff in the SEM all day long. And I'm, I guess I might still want to mentor students and do research. Um, but uh, I might cut back on the teaching quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you could fund your own research. I could, uh, for a little while. A uh, million dollars does not get you very far in science, mm -hmm. so. Um, you start your own foundation to fund your own work. Yeah, that's well, that's what I would ultimately probably end up having to do with it. But um, I don't play the lottery, so I'm not going to win the lottery. But um, if I did, you know, that's probably where I would go with it. Oh, look at that. Then I could also support some of my friends, too, so that would be fun. Let me know if you want in, uh, if I win the lottery pack. And oh, if, yeah. <laughs> if you win the lottery that you don't play, I definitely want in. Okay. You might have to, um, I don't know. Like I'm going to set up the institution. I probably am not going to move to San Francisco, so not sure how you're going to manage. I guess we could always just have you come visit all you want. Yeah, you could have a satellite office. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> right, for coastal research. <laughs> well, that's actually not a terrible it's idea. Right? It's not a horrible idea. All right, let me rotate around to three and see if there's something cool on okay. three. Okay. Whoop, here we go. Oh, this is a live sample. 
Oh. Well, it was live. Now it's not. <laughs> I can tell because everything's in chains. So there's like uh, a Stereonolopsis chain and then there was a Thalassocyra chain over here. So mm -hmm. you can tell right away. Here's a big Catastrophe chain that I'm looking at, like material that was collected that hasn't been processed. As in not boiled in acid. Yeah, 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 not boiled in acid. There's some, oh, this is the one with the giant, uh, the giant diatom in it that you zoom out, you can get the whole thing in, here it is. Oh, that's right, it's huge. Big long guy that distracted us from a previous, uh, on a previous <laughs> stream. That was massive. I saw another one of those in my live sample yesterday. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. You went out and collected diatoms and other things yesterday from the plankton? No, I had, I had leftovers from uh, teaching. Oh, okay. I was helping out bringing the microscope world to students doing um, distance or remote learning because mm -hmm. they haven't opened up schools in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. and, um, sometimes I bring plankton on my microscope via Zoom to classrooms around the bay. Why just around the bay? Um, because there's only so many hours in the day and those are the people that <laughs> would actually have been coming to uh, the visitor center at Christie Field um, for the local National Marine Sanctuary if there hadn't been a pandemic. And so because they already had, they would normally be there with their classes in person. We get to be there virtually for them. How many schools? Uh, so you do these regularly, right? Yeah, well, I help out regularly, right? It's not my it's not my job. I'm a volunteer, and um, I don't I don't actually know what the numbers are because I don't keep track of that. There, there are people who are paid who keep track of all of that amazing information. There's hundreds of school kids that go through the program um, that we digitally visit their classroom. I found the other okay. silica flagellate here. You did this one. The four-cornered one. Crux. Dictyota crux. Dic ah, erg. I can never remember the Latin names. I don't know. It's this is one's here. got four, four edges, and the other one has like five or six. Yeah. So it's. Does it have a nubbin in the middle? Yeah. There's, there's one that's. It's got something pointed out at us, like. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, so maybe it's not crux. Huh? No, no, it's not crux. And it's really square. Yeah. And jaggedy. I think I saw. Starodon? I think I saw the five pointed one over here. Somewhere just on the edge of this field of view. Because I thought I saw both of them at the same time. Yeah. Oh, here it is. There's one there, and there's one there. Silica flagellates. We're not going to pay attention to those guys, though. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's okay. I got pictures of them. I know where they are. <laughs> On a stub in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also true. I can always come back and revisit any of these. If you have time, time is the one thing that's, um, that's limit. It's the limiting factor. Well, that's always the case. Mm. I never have time to do anything. But you do so much. I know. That's some sort of weird. How does that work? <laughs> this is another triangle guy. Inside, outside. Uh, 
I'm not sure what that uh, is. It's a, it's a different one. No, really? Yeah. It's more pointy. Yeah, it's got can it's got uh, protracted ends. It's a different species. I don't know if it's a different genus, but it's a different species. So, there's two species of weird triangle things that are small that I can't see very well. At least. <laughs> at least two. Yeah, at least. Ah, oh, so cool. That one's got a cool little tube sticking out. Huh. Thalassia syra E? Yeah, it's probably Thalassia syra. I'm not seeing any uh, little minions with hairs sticking out in every direction, though. I know, I know, I'm not either. Well, we tried. We did, we did. Valiant effort. It's just the way it goes. Sometimes the yes. sometimes the snark gets you. Sometimes you get the snark. But there were so many really beautiful things today. Odd things that I've never seen that close. Yeah. It's fun. I was, I'm always like, whenever we look through these types of things, I'm always looking for those little dinoflagellates and mm. things we don't usually see intact as frequent. Mm -hmm. Usually they're just blobs. Covered with boogers. Yeah. Sounds like marine plankton. <laughs> it's not animals. Blobs covered in boogers. Look at this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Uh, that actually has a lot of ups and downs. That has more. Two, yeah. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, the last one was six. Yeah. And then this one's eight. Hmm. It's got a lot. It does. We didn't see any of these in the digested part so i'm gonna get maybe this is our last photo okay once i get it into focus you can see it's covered with like you know boogers it's got life stuff life boogers on it but we'll make do sometimes the it's good just to have a picture of something weird like this so at least you got one of them Even if it's covered with boogers. Yeah. Ugh. That's a lot. So are they different species or different s ages? Or did it like make a mistake? That's a different species. So the species determines the number of ups and downs? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. not like uh, the normal one that we see, which is like Actinopticus syrians or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not that one. No. It's something different. <laughs> it's different. But what is it? Well, you got the book. I know, but I don't think it's in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to help you then. <laughs> I don't know how to help you either. If it's not in my book, what do I do? Where do I look? That's so frustrating. Uh, okay. Um, so here's the point where I should say thanks to everybody for hanging out with us, and especially for Pacific Plankton for uh, struggling through our early uh, attempts to get sound to come out of the machine the way it's supposed to, and for Micah for helping out with that as well. And um, I will be back on, I think, Wednesday. Uh, all things equal, I should be able to get another stream in on Wednesday um, to, I don't know what we'll look at. Uh, I think maybe Laura and I will be looking at some stuff, but I don't know for sure. And then, um, so you should check out Pacific Plankton. She's going to stream from her light microscope on Monday night. Mm -hmm. And starting around midnight Eastern or whatever that is, nine o'clock on Pacific time. And yes. um, 
and maybe we'll see some more cool things uh, crawling around in her samples or floating around in her samples. Um, and I should figure out who we're going to raid. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. It's always such an incredible treat to see these organisms so close and in such rich detail. It's just, it's amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Hmm, who to pick? Maybe we should go raid Seek Ye Wisdom, who is playing a retro game. Ah. Oh, they've got a be right back screen. Uh -oh. <laughs> Last Miles is um, messing around with Linux, apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we could definitely go get Last Miles. Um, oh, and, and OpenSet says if you don't know who to raid, the, um, Dr. WD40 might be a good one. Yeah. He he's birding. Oh, he's oh birding. Oh, God, not earn nine points. Birding would be good. Oh, he's doing a total outdoor stream, huh? Okay. Let's go get Dr. WD40 then. That's fine. I like birds. Oops. Birds are cool. I can't wait till I'm able to go out and oh, do some more going. birding. Is it really going to hide from us in there? I think so. You know what? Let's check this different angle. All right. We're Let's all set up. up. So thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us today. And... Um, for all the follows, for Micah, for the uh, for the uh, community um, subscriptions that you gave out, and um, for uh, Mindalator, who's asked me to have Sylvia draw them a picture. I'll see if I can find uh, find her when I get home and have her draw you something. And then uh, I suppose for Anakin Luke, Luke will also I'll make. Uh, Pacific Plankton draw you something and stick it in Discord, in our Discord. So you can and check it out And if Sylvia there. doesn't feel like I got her covered. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Perfect. Alright, uh, so we'll go raid Dr. WD-40. He's doing some birding, and um, we'll catch you guys next time. Yeah, the stream's over now, uh, Mr. Crab. Sorry about that. You just missed it. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday from 1 to 3, so you can check us out then as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. That was fun. That was so cool.